name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon, Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. Sunday at 8.30 and CBS brings you Jeff Regan, Investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan, with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery and suspense and adventure in tonight's transcribed story. She's lovely, she's engaged, she eats soybeans. This one revolved around a beauty, the kind that drives some men mad, some to murder. Her name, last week, was Miss Fireworks on the 4th. But she didn't have to worry about catching on fire. Everything was insured. But there was somebody that didn't like her in a bathing suit. And a big guy that shot skeet and never missed. But once. I got a call from my boss, the lion, last Wednesday morning before breakfast. Said he had to see me right away. When I got down to the detective bureau, the lion was chewing slowly and holding a... Picture, Jeffrey. A photograph, to be exact. Chewing your cud, lion? A wheat kernels, Jeffrey. Sunny fruit of Mother Earth. I saved some for your breakfast. Where's the marmalade? Hey, don't scoff, my boy. These golden grains of patented wheat... Who's got a uh... patent on wheat? Steve Albright. And this isn't just any wheat. It's grown only in a sun-splashed acre of alluvial soil, watered by a gushing spring of... Uh... Have a kernel, Jeffrey. Thanks. It's the new miracle health food, my boy. If you're fa- uh, heavy, it slims you. If you're lean, it fa- builds you up. And you need only ten kernels a day. Here, have another. Uh, the picture, Fatso. Yes, the picture. Well, look what the wheat has done for this girl, Jeffrey. Uh, wrong side up. Eh? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Ah, bathing beauty. <laughs> a professional, my boy. He travels around the country doing, uh, uh doing, uh... This. Yes. Yeah, but there's trouble afoot, Jeffrey. This lovely girl is in some sort of danger. What kind? That's your job, my boy. You must find out. Our retainer of $150 says you do. Who's Steve Albright? Uh, her manager. He left me these pictures of the girl, and when I asked how she managed to keep her figure... He produced uh, the sack of wheat and said... Chew slowly. Yeah, something like that. What's the girl's name? Uh, name? I uh, I guess I uh, <laughs> forgot to ask. You're right. Doesn't make any matter. Where do I find the Steve Albright? Yeah, I have the address right here. Oh, you're improving. Uh, oh, here, here it is. Now give me back my picture and get right out there. Mr. Albright said this girl is a very valuable property. <laughs> Some photographs lie, but these told the truth about soft hair flowing down to the waist, a fluted figure tight in a two-piece bathing suit, if you look real close for it. Now, who'd want to get a girl like this into trouble? But somebody did. It was afternoon before I could contact Albright. His office was in a small white stucco building back of the Sunset Strip. No elevators. The directory said, Steve Albright, Massive Enterprises Incorporated, Suite 3. I found it. The door said enter. I entered. Regan, excellent. The office was one room, a desk, and... Steve Albright is my name. Perfect. Glad you got here so soon. Excellent. Glad to know you. Wonderful. Uh, You're thinking this is a small office, that Massive Enterprises is broke. I ask you to examine the books, Mr. Regan. You've paid us. Uh, There's somewhere in this drawer. Oh, here they are. Excellent. Where's the girl? Uh, We'll come to her, fine. Grand. Uh, the books, you see? I go back to 1948. That's when I found her. What do you call her? Uh, actual name, Jerry Shoulder. Marvelous. But no one knows her by that name. As you can see in the books, Mr. Regan, it's always something like uh, Miss Gold Coast. Mm-hmm. Let's see, Chicago, $1,436.56. Two days' work, pictures, endorsements, radio shots. Mm-hmm. Good money for two days' work. Jerry was Miss Coltar Derivatives for the Duplan Manufacturing Empire. $2,769.84. In three days, marvelous. Of course, the flower festivals and all have a bathing beauty contest, but they find it's much simpler and more advantageous to have a professional win. She knows how to pose, she knows what to say and do, and of course, she's more beautiful. That uh, makes sense. You say she's in trouble. Eh, uh, we did very well in Kansas City as Miss Ground Round for the butchers. I want to know about now. Uh, well, since we've been here, Mr. Regan, there have been innuendos, threats against her life. Why? I don't know. 
Uh, well, here, you can see from a picture. You left pictures of her with Lion, I'm convinced. Uh, I mean, Mr. Regan, it's seldom that a girl comes along who has all... Delightful. Uh, I mean, it's insured. Insurance is a wonderful business. Yeah, $100,000 overall. And Lloyds of London will pay $10,000 if she injures those legs of hers. Mm -hmm. You want me to act as her bodyguard, eh? Precisely, Grand. Delightful. Mm. Uh, that is, if you feel you can resist her. You see, Mr. Regan, her value as a professional bathing beauty is ruined if she gets mixed up with men. Marries. Uh-huh. You, uh, got a policy on that, too? Mm, 50000 I promise I won't marry the girl. Your big job is to keep men away from her. What man? Uh, uh, His name? Uh, uh, Banyan. He is tall, good-looking. Yeah, I know him. Cheap rackets here. Oh, excellent. Then we can do business. Um... Just curiosity, Albright, but uh, what about the golden grains of patented wheat? Oh, oh, that's just a sideline of our enterprise, Mr. Regan. Women wonder how Jerry Shoulder managed to keep what you see in this photograph, so we started a little health food business on the side. Now, another thing, uh, if something happens to Jerry Shoulder, who gets the insurance money? Massive enterprises. Which is? Me. Oh. I checked the insurance policies. They seemed genuine. I asked where I could find Jerry's shoulder and was told the beauty parlor. Where else? And that's where I headed, only instead of a parlor, it was a beauty salon. The doors were plate glass, the doorman, an electric eye. The plate glass swung out. I swung in. I sank into the deep rug like it was something alive. The place was wired for music. There were flowers and a statue of Aphrodite, life-size, standing in the fountain. The official greeter was Trey Chick in ascot tie and cutaway pants. Watch it to you, Mac. He said, noticing my glance. You maybe want your hair done. If you don't mind my asking, um, why are you working here? The slick dames got to get their kicks. I remind them of Humphrey Bogart. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, now, Humph, uh, could you tell me... My name is Mongo. Who was that? Just a dame getting beautiful. You was asking? I, uh, I'm looking for a girl named Jerry Shoulder. All right, wise guy. <laughs> in here, Mr. Banyan will want to talk to you. The big guy rammed his shoulder into my stomach, then grabbed my arm and twisted it behind my back. He opened a door and shoved me into a room. <laughs> he locked the door from the outside. There was another door, and it was locked, too. I looked around the room. It was like a medieval torture chamber. Weird racks and iron maidens connected to steam pipes. Metal rollers and headless horses. All to change nature's idea of what a woman should look like. I tried the door again. This time it opened. Only someone was coming in. She was young. She was lovely. She wore a bathing suit. Tall, deeply tanned brunette. Moving easily toward me on calendar legs. You want to see me? There's more? I'm Jerry Shoulder. I thought maybe. I don't get to meet men. I'm I'm sorry you caught me looking like this. Well, it's all right. You see, I just had my hair done and had to wrap it in a towel. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mungo tried to keep me out of here, but I persuaded him to let me come in. You wanted me for something? I'm your new bodyguard, lady. Steve's starting that again. Doesn't huh? want you to get into trouble. Oh, you wouldn't let anything happen to me, would you, Mr. Uh... Regan? Oh, Mr. Regan, the lion's eye. Oh, I've heard of you. I've, I've heard you're very good. On some things. Well, you mustn't pay too much attention to my manager. Your Mr. manager Regan. says you've been threatened. Oh, there must be some mistake. I've never been threatened in my life. Oh, pardon me while I climb up on my horse. Huh? Oh. <laughs> There. Yeah. No, don't leave, Mr. Regan. Stay right here. Hmm. It's time for my exercise. Do you have any idea who might uh, want to do you bodily harm? I just love exercise, Mr. Regan. Yeah, sure. Could it be a man named Banyan? Mr. Regan, you've got to help me get out of this place. You, you man, come here. There was a woman standing in the doorway. There was a gun in her hand. I know how to use this. Get away from her. She motioned me toward the door. I obliged. 
Then we were in the hall, and I noticed the woman was holding the gun awkwardly. The safety was on. You men are all alike. Yeah, they tell me. Now, give me the gun. You stay away from Jerry. The gun. I'll just put it back in my purse, but you stay away from Jerry now. The woman dropped the gun into her purse. She wore a plain, hugging jersey dress. Gray hair in a bun at the back of her head. The kind of a woman you see in bars. Late. Alone. We've got to keep men away from Jerry. I'm sorry if I frightened you. Don't tell me you're a private eye. Oh, I'm Martha, Jerry's wardrobe mistress. I keep her bathing suits in cool, dry places. They're latex, you know. Do you know a man named Albright? Well, sure, that's Jerry's manager. He's the one that told me to protect Jerry, keep the men away. Well, then why didn't you do it? The way she came walking in, anybody could have got to her. I was busy for a moment in the back, looking for a cool, dry place. Does Jerry know a small-time racketeer named Banyan? Well, if she does, I don't know about it. And I'm with her constantly. Yeah, like today. Oh, I'll bet you're Jeff Regan. Yeah, so Albright told you I was on the case, He huh? tells me everything, Mr. Regan. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he can tell you why Jerry didn't follow us out into the hall. It does seem strange. We better take a look in that room. Jerry's shoulder was gone, out the other door. But we still had a catch. Standing in the middle of the 17th century chamber of mechanical horrors was a 20th century mess. The ape in ascot tie and pearl buttons, only now his clothes were torn, his face scratched and bleeding. All right, where's the girl? I was only trying to Wake help. Wake up, will you? Where is Mr. she? Mr. Banyan, he Banyan said... Banyan again. Keep her safe from guys, he Snap said. out of it, will well, you? I, I couldn't hit his girl. I tried to hold her. She hit me and scratched me. Is she still me. in the building? She even screamed at me, but I couldn't hit his girl. Banyan, sure. Cool. And I know where to find him. Banyan operated out of the Seven Club. But when I checked, he wasn't there. I finally caught up with him outside of town, in a spot hidden from the highway. A country club. A gambling joint that featured bare-knuckle bouts, cockfighting, and now, Banyan, with a shotgun in his hands, shooting skeet. Pull! Dead duck. Nice shooting, Banyan. Talking to yourself, Banyan? Huh? Oh, Regan. Shooting clay pigeons a little out of your line, isn't it, Banyan? Clay pigeons? You never know which way they'll fly. Sharpens the eye. Pull. Yeah. Makes it easy when you're trying for a larger target. Nice spot you got here. Doesn't belong to me, if that's what you're after. No, no, no. The way I read it, brand new beauty parlor belongs to you. Likewise, a guy named Mungo. That's your new front. Regan, it's a salon. Oh, yeah, I thought... What I'm after, Banyan, is a girl named Jerry Shoulder. Never heard of her. Beautiful, isn't she? Very. Look, I'm playing for keeps. Oh? Uh -huh. You won't mind if I just slip a few more shells into my shotgun. Just remember, I don't scare. Oh, I'd almost forgotten. Open up, Banyan. Jerry Shoulder. You know what my enemies are saying, Regan? That Jerry Shoulder's as good as dead. Pull! You missed. This time, I checked the club grounds. No Jerry's shoulder. She wasn't with Banyan. I headed back to L.A. fast. It was late when I reached L.A. I had to get the lion. I phoned him at his apartment. Nobody home. I called again 15 minutes later. Still no answer. I was getting worried. I went to his apartment. He wasn't there. I checked with the janitor. He told me the lion was on the roof. That's where I found him. In bed. Lion. Hey, Lion. Lion detective. Oh, it's you, Jeffrey. Why the boy scouting on the roof? I'm sleeping in nature's own clean, sweet air. My boy. I moved my cot up here just this evening. Look, Lion. You're sleeping uh, under the stars just as Mother Nature intended. Lion, If I'm... Mr. Albright says Miss Shoulder sleeps out even when it's raw, it's part of the health plan. Look at me, Jeffrey. I'm thinner already. You know, I've only had eight kernels of the patented wheat today instead of ten. <laughs> I did without dessert. Listen, Fatso, I'm heading for Jerry Shoulder's hotel. I want you to check on Banyan. Is that low criminal? Find out where he's been the last few days, how he's been spending his time, everything. Keep an eye on it. Oh, oh, all right, Jeffrey, if you insist. I insist. Uh, do you think you'll find Miss Shoulder at a hotel? Maybe. If she's alive. I 
I dropped the lion off at police headquarters to get a rundown on Banyan. Then I drove to Jerry Shoulder's apartment hotel. The street was quiet and deserted. Most of the windows were black, just a few lights here and there. Patio balconies, very swank. Inside, there was a self-help elevator. I went up. The elevator opened onto a long corridor, a small night light down at the end. The room was 306. I was almost at the door when the door banged open and coming at me fast was that mug from the beauty parlor, Mungo. Out of my way. No, brother, not this time. It's my... My fist pounded his stomach as soft as pie. He doubled and fell. I jumped over him and ran into the apartment. The lights were on. The living room was empty. I tried the bedroom. The light was on in there, too, glaring white on what I didn't want to see. There was a body lying across the bed. Not Jerry's shoulder. A man's body, a bullet through his chest. The dead man was Steve Albright. The ripped sheet that covered him was stained. Purple. This is CBS, and you are listening to tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator, entitled... She's lovely, she's engaged, she eats soybeans. Steve Albright was dead in Jerry Shoulder's apartment. A bullet hole in his chest. And what looked like purple acid burns through the bedclothes. I'd caught Mungo, the well-dressed ape from the beauty parlor, coming out of the apartment door. And I knew that Mungo worked for Banyan, the racketeer. Albright had hired me as Jerry Shoulder's bodyguard. <laughs> He'd have done better to have hired me as his... I called candidate homicide. Now, the police photographers were gone. We were waiting for the coroner. Candid sitting on the bed next to Albright's body. Candid was eating Fig Newtons. Well, I'm glad you held on to Mungo, Regan. You think he did it, Candid? Open and shut case. You know, uh, Jerry's shoulder was insured, but plenty. Yeah, you said. I called the night number of the insurance company right after I called you, Candid. They said all their policies were in effect but one. You know which one? I'm not interested, Regan. I've got the killer. It was the one that would have paid off to Albright. The deceased. If Jerry had married. Hmm. That policy lapsed a month ago. My insurance is always lapsing. Well, this one lapsed because Albright married Jerry Shoulder himself. What? The company wouldn't pay on that. And Albright couldn't let it out because there's no such thing as a married bathing beauty. So Mungo was nuts about the dame. She gives him the come on. He finds out about her being married. Comes up here and... And? Have a Fig Newton, Regan. They're real fresh. And? Well, he was going to kill the girl, like they all do, Regan. You know that. But Mungo gets real mad when he finds her husband in her bed, and he knocks him off. Mungo denies it. They all do, Regan. You know, Cannon, the way the bullet entered, looks like it was a hurry-up job. So Mungo was nervous. You know Mungo worked for Banyan. We've got the killer. Mind if I, uh, turn out these lights? Hey, now, wait a... Regan! I can't see. Yeah, it's kind of dark in here. Regan, where are you? I feel something moving. There's a dead guy in here, Regan. Give your eyes a chance to get used to the dark. Oh, gee, turn the light on. Huh? Barely make out the figure on the bed. In the name of the law, Regan. <laughs> okay, I... Candid. I've got all I need here. I left Candid and the dead man and headed for my car. But I saw something across the street that stopped me. A long black convertible with a top up. Over the wheel, I could see a face. Banyan. I ran across the street, grabbed the door handle just as the car started to move. Opened it and pulled the handbrake. Take it easy, Regan. You're liable to get hurt. Are you waiting for someone, Banyan? What I do is my business. Been up to Jerry's apartment tonight, Banyan? Cops having a ball over there, Regan? Yeah, a real party. They're serving refreshments. Fig Newtons. I stopped laughing in 29. Maybe you've been in the building. Just got out. You were leaving without saying goodbye. Where's Jerry's shoulder, Regan? Let's look in your car trunk. If anything happened to that girl, I'm holding you responsible. Put that gun away. She's the only clean, decent thing I've ever had in my life. Something a peeper like you wouldn't understand. Try me. Jerry's shoulder and I are engaged to be married. You'll have to stand in line. Yeah? Quitting the racket. Sure, at first I was just playing around with Jerry, but then I found she was... Different. A decent dame. You've known Jerry's shoulder how long, Banyan? Three weeks? Ever since she's been in town. Yeah, maybe three weeks. How'd you meet her? I answered a lonely heart's ad. Look, Mannion, 
I know you started that beauty shop front so you could meet Jerry there. Or have her brought there so you could be nearer. Oh, let's stop fishing. Sorry, time's running out, Banyan. I gotta give it to you straight. Jerry's shoulder was married to Steve Albright. What? Why, you lying... Somebody's been killed in Jerry's shoulder's bed, and it looks like it might be a hubby. Maybe you better go take a look. Banyan ran upstairs, but I didn't have time to wait for his reaction. I had an appointment at Massive Enterprises. It was four in the morning now. A clear sky pouring cold moonlight down on the deserted stucco that housed Massive Enterprises Incorporated. The outside door was open. Steve Albright's office was locked. It opened on the third key I tried. I snapped the overhead light on. Everything just as I remembered it. I opened the desk and found what I wanted. When Steve Albright had said that Massive Enterprises consisted of himself, he was almost right. The health food sideline was in the name of Martha Highgate. I used the phone to raise the line. Tried every place I thought he might be. Then tried the office of the detective bureau. Anthony J. Lyon, Detective Bureau. Anthony J. Me, Lyon. Fatso? Oh, Jeffrey, my boy. I've been trying to locate What'd you. What'd you get on Banyan? Hey, that's what I wanted to tell you. I picked up his trail at the Seven Club. He was with Jerry's shoulder. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I just talked to Banyan. Yeah, I'm not surprised, Jeffrey. I took his girl away from him. Jerry's shoulder? Yes, when they came out of the club, Banyan went to get his car. I spoke to Miss Shoulder and told her she was in great danger. Showed my credentials and she came with me. With you? Yes. Oh, she's a very nice girl, my boy. She said she's had to go around with Banyan. He practically forced her to accompany him. Where's Jerry's shoulder now? Well, she was here at the office up until an hour ago. We had a midnight bite of wheat and quite a nice chat. She's gone? Well, I was out getting a drink of water, and when I came back, she was gone. Anything else on Banyan? Oh, yes. There is no Banyan. Come again? Banyan is just one of the aliases taken by a hoodlum whose real name is Highgate. Highgate? And he has an older sister named Martha. Yes, but how... That's all I needed. Thanks, Lion. It began to make sense. When Banyan saw Jerry's shoulder had run out on him, he phoned downtown to Mungo, had Mungo check her apartment. That's where I found him. I looked through Albright's desk and found Martha Highgate's address. It was the Rondo Hotel. When I got there, the room clerk was smiling. Room 405, where you can put you on find Martha Highgate up there. Who will I find? Smooth day, must be a friend. Had a bottle and some ice cubes sent up just a little while ago, celebrating. Celebrating? Wearing a bathing suit. I went upstairs and knocked on the door. I waited. Then I felt the knob turn in my hand. The door opened. And there, in a tight-fitting bathing suit, stood... Ah, oh, come in, Mr. Regan. Hey, wait a minute. You're not Jerry's come shoulder. Come in, Mr. Regan. The room was dim in pink light. There was a rosy globe hanging down from the ceiling. A phonograph was playing. And the woman was the bathing beauty's wardrobe mistress, Martha Highgate. Drink, Mr. Regan. No, thanks, lady. Oh, don't you like me? Just a little... I'll like you more after we talk. Do you like me in this light? See, I uh, <clears throat> kept my figure young, Mr. Regan. You can't cheat Father Time with a pink light, lady. My hair looks almost black, if you don't stand too close. It's long, Mr. Regan. You even had the bellboy fooled with that bathing suit and your hair down, Mother. I'm Jerry's shoulder now. It'll take more than wishing to give you what she has, lady. Maybe a little drink will improve your eyesight. No one's eyesight's too good in a darkened bedroom, Martha. Bedroom? You love Steve Albright, didn't you, Martha? Love Steve? Oh, sure, and he loves me. Yeah, he did all right by you, too. Made you part of massive enterprises, gave you a cut of the profits. But that wasn't enough. You wanted him. Uh-uh. I've got him. Oh, no, lady. Somebody's got him now, but not you. <laughs> not Jerry's shoulder. Steve Albright is dead. Dead? One thing, lady, you didn't know that Steve and Jerry were married. Steve and Jerry? Yeah, you should have turned that bedroom light on before you threw that acid. What do you mean? Jerry was on a date tonight with your brother. No. You killed Steve Albright, her husband. Steve. You made certain with a gun. But you couldn't stand the thought of Jerry's shoulder looking beautiful even in death. 
So you used acid, too. I can use this gun again, Mr. Regan. Oh, no, you won't use it again, Martha. You're a one-time gal. You won't kill again. Don't try me. Give me that gun, Martha. Stand back. Give it to me. All right. The muzzle blast was hot on my face. But Martha was still a poor hand with a gun. The bullet went wild, and I had her by the arms, tight. Get your hands off her, Regan. <laughs> Banyan. Oh, honey, I knew you'd come. I knew you wouldn't let me t- take him. All right, give me the gun, Regan. One inside your coat, too. That's right. You won't get away with this, Banyan. What's Regan doing here, sis? Shoot him. Kill him, honey. What's Regan doing in your room? Well, he was going to take me in for killing Steve Albright. But now you won't let him. <laughs> you won't let him, will you, honey? Why the bathing suit? She went up there to kill Jerry's shoulder, Banyan. Why the bathing suit? I'm as beautiful as she is. Jealousy, Banyan. Your sister wanted Steve, but he fell for Jerry. How about it, sis? I wish now they'd been together tonight. I didn't know they were married. I'd have killed both of them. That's why I threw Jerry at you, honey. You wanted her, and I wanted to get rid of her. Oh, gee, I, I'm glad you showed up, honey. Now, come on, kill Regan. Come on, shoot Regan. No. That's not the way it's going to be. All right, Regan, here's your gun. What? My... Thanks, Banyan. What are you doing? You, you, you're my brother. You can't do that. You can't turn me You don't in. need to worry about Martha, Regan. No, I can't. So Jerry was married. Well, all that's over for me. But you tried to kill her, Martha. So I'm turning you in myself. No, no you can't. That'll hurt me. You're my brother. Yes, the woman in the bathing brother. suit, flattered by the rosy light, you know, allowed her brother to take her by the arm and lead her from the room. Banyan delivered his sister to Candid down at Homicide, but to make sure, I followed Banyan's car all the way. Too bad about Banyan. Jerry was the only good thing that ever happened to him in his life. But it happened too late. Anyway, Candid finally found the scared Jerry shoulder, released Banyan's sidekick, Mungo, and that put a period. It was ten in the morning when I checked in at the office. The lion was singing. There was a boy, a very strange enchanted oh, boy. Oh, nature boy. Oh, Jeffrey. Still uh, packing away the wheat, fatso? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, notice how much weight I've lost already, my boy. You know, this morning I saw my cheekbones for the first time in years. Oh, Eyes sunken, color gray. Jeffrey, I've never felt so healthy. I've been eating nothing but golden grains of patented wheat. Patented? Patented. You know, Miss Shoulder eats nothing but health foods, Jeffrey. Last night she recommended a health food restaurant where we might have lunch. The Grated Garbanzo Grotto. Fine, fine. It serves nothing but the finest dried soybeans. Good. Uh, yes, uh, raw cabbage. Delicious. Uh, delicious. Uh, choice beach bark. Yummy. Yummy. Yeah, I knew you weren't touching any other kind of food. Oh, health foods, Jeffrey. Nature's boon to mankind. That's why I turned down the invitation for you. Morted mango invitation. What invitation? Of course, sir. Uh, I'm going. Uh, you're going where? Candid's barbecue out at his place. You were invited, but. Uh, I knew you wouldn't be interested. Eh? Barbecue? No, you wouldn't want hot buttered corn. Eh? Corn? Rich Caesar salad. Eh? Salad? Mounds of golden brown French fried potatoes. Oh! Steaks four inches thick. (laughs) So long, Lion. Jeffrey, wait for me! Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by William Frug and Gilbert Thomas, produced and directed by Sterling Tracy, and stars Frank Graham as Regan, with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Original music is by Dick Aran. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is heard each week at the same time over CBS. Bob Stevenson speaking, reminding you that Jeff Regan will be back next week transcribed. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>